had a run in with himself. Can't even tell you how it started. Actually, I can. He was looking for his car keys and asked me if I'd seen them. I said I hadn't. He said he always leaves them in the little dish in the kitchen. And since I'm the only other person who lives here, and his phone rang, are you going to get that? I said, leave it, he said, grabbing it off me. But let's just say things got a bit heated after that. So I went out for a walk. I'm marching through the jacko, fuming, and this dog scurries up to me. He's a friendly little thing, so I pat him. And there rubbing him, telling him how handsome he is. When his owner comes along, sorry, she says, I can't keep up with him like I used to. They have similar coloured hair, blondy beige with a bit of salt and pepper running through it. She stops to catch her breath. We're blessed with the weather all the same, she says. And this starts the usual chit chat, you know. Sure, it's all a bit mad, isn't it? <laughs> she formally introduces me to Rambo. And as I'm getting ready to walk away, I finish with a, ah, sure, it's a whole new world now. Let's hope things get back to normal soon. Do you think, she says, in no hurry to leave? <laughs> she prefers the pace. She's been watching her kids killing themselves with rents and mortgages they can't afford. And it reminds her of herself and the husband doing the exact same thing a few years back. At least then we enjoyed the lifestyle, she says. When the recession hit, she was convinced he was going to have a heart attack, trying to keep it all afloat. She begged him to slow down, but he wouldn't listen. They never do. He was devastated, handing back the keys to the holiday home, then the car. I'll never forget his face, she says, like Rambo going the vet. Myself and himself, run an event management company. We're a lean machine, eight core people, and a lot of freelancers who work for us. Every time one of their names flashes up on our phone, I feel like getting sick. I've nothing to tell them. We've already put the mortgage on ice and defaulted rent on the office. I feel like throwing my phone in the river letting Rambo retrieve it and bury it like a bone. They weren't far off retirement, she tells me, when they lost it all. But look at us. Here we are, retired and getting along. And at least this way, he's still around to enjoy it. As long as everyone's safe and well, you don't need that much. As we're standing there, chatting, every time someone passes, we all say hello. And eventually we say goodbye. I never did catch her name. He was lovely talking to you, she says. You too, I say. Because it really was. Head on. Decide to be nicer to himself. I get back. He's already started the dinner. I walk up behind him and put my arms around him. I'm sorry, I say. Me too, he says. I'm hanging my jacket up in the hall and I hear a jingle. I reach into my pocket and I pull out his keys. <laughs> I remember. I used them last night to open the back gate when I was bringing the bins in. I sneak back into the kitchen and silently put them in their dish. Do you find your keys, I say, head in the fridge. No, he says, automatically looking to their spot. Ah, for I swear I must have looked in there ten times. He catches me smiling. I kill you, he says. But I'm not afraid. Because I know we'll be okay. Hi, I'm Kira O'Callaghan. I'm an actress. I'm Elaine Murphy. I'm a playwright. And this is Dear, Dear Bingo. Um, and be kind to people and the sense of community and looking out for each other. I'd like to think the world would be a kinder place. Um, I know as artists we're all struggling, but we will come back. We're already coming back in a different way. Um, but determination and talent will see us through. 
Um, probably my favourite memories of uh, plays. Usually people think it's the awards or whatever, and, and they're lovely, don't get me wrong, they're really nice. But one of my favourite, favourite memories is sitting up the back of a theatre and hearing people laughing. And not only, I always judge the laughter on the coffin afterwards, because if the laughter is really good, everybody coughs afterwards. And I remember that won't happen now, <laughs> because nobody will cough anymore. But uh, uh, I remember at the time thinking, that's a great memory of just like listening to everybody laugh and cough. The only advice I'd offer uh, is just to uh, go ahead and do it. Don't wait for somebody, if you're an actress, don't wait for somebody to ring and offer you a part. If you're a writer, don't wait for someone to ask you to write the script. Go off, write the script, find the actress. If you're an actress and you don't have a script, find someone you know who writes and, and just try and get together and make stuff and, and do that. That's how you learn and that's how you'll push each other on. And yeah, just don't wait to be asked, just do it. Something I've learned over the years is um, auditions, they're tough. And to actors and actresses, I would just say, prepare, go in, give it 100%. And after that, try and just go home, close the door behind you, tear up the sides, forget about it. If you get the part, fantastic. If you don't, you'll be working on the next thing. It's really out of your control. And I think once you accept that, it really helps. It certainly has helped me. But in saying that, go in there, giving it 100%. You know, no matter what, whether you get the part or not, you've done your best. And after that, it's up to them. That's really what I would say, because you'll beat yourself up so much in this business otherwise.
So I'm Glenn Matthews, I'm a visual artist studying in the pop art style and this is for Dear Finger. I think the first one I did as a commission was David Grohl. And I swapped that painting, which was about the size of this one, for a cajon, which cost about 100 quid. So it was a straight swap. And that was my first ever professional gig. Um, and from there, it, it sort of snowballed and installed, and then it would grow again. And, and people following me would just strange people I didn't know started following me on Instagram and Facebook. So that was pretty cool. Um, then I got a commission from a friend of mine who wanted me to do a painting of Steve Garrigan, another local lad. So anyway, we picked a photograph, um, a great shot of Steve giving it socks on stage. And I got a, a friend request from Steve Garrigan. And I thought, this is a wind up. This is just a joke. And I looked into it. This lad has 20,000 friends, so possibly it's the real deal. So I accepted, sent it out, Steve, what's the story? So then I got a, a, a message from him, love your painting, um, is it for sale? So I said, yeah, and uh, told him what price it was. He said, right, I'll take it. So that was the start of a relationship with Steve and suddenly your credibility, if you know, an artist of whatever genre that you know and admire buys your art, that sort of gave me a bit of a kick in the ass to say, you know, you might, might actually be good at this. Once I'd painted a few bits and pieces and Having painted Steve, and I did a painting of a couple of lads of Led Zeppelin and stuff, then I thought, right, I'm going to start painting heroes of mine from the past. So I did a Rory Gallagher whenever I was growing up. They're just huge. And of course, he lived in Belfast for a while, so there's a connection there. Gary Moore went to the same school as my dad, things like that, and connections like that. Van Morrison, obviously. And um, every now and again, I would email merch companies, record companies, t-shirt companies, email them off with uh, images that I'd painted just to see if they'd want them for t-shirts or whatever, because you can make a few quid if someone buys your work and they sell it on t-shirts. This guy, Dan, started to email me about, about this image. Um, is it for sale? What size is it? Do you really like it? And I said, I wonder who this guy is. So I scrolled on down a bit, and there was Dan Gallagher, the Rory Gallagher Foundation, the Rory Gallagher uh, Festival, and so on, and so on, and so on. I thought, oh God, I've been chatting to a Gallagher this whole time. Anyway, I, I was blown away that Donald Gallagher wanted my painting of his brother. But I got another email then, would you be interested in, in, in us having the image to use? So I said, yeah, bang, an album cover, the French Connection. So they used my image on the Rory Gallagher French Connection live album from recordings in 1974 in Paris. Whenever we knew, whenever we heard that we were going into lockdown, I decided from the, from the get-go that I was going to use it as a period of just intense work. Not only just painting a lot, but promotion, making connections. This particular image, um, it's very powerful. It's about 30 years old. It's obviously from the Fly era of U2 and what they were doing then. This, and the, this project means a lot because it's, it's recognition from an art, another artist. Uh, that I respect, that is trusting me to create images. The end of each painting is, is so liberating because you've finished it and it means you're happy with it. I read this uh, a while back and it sort of resonated with me and I think it, it, it serves uh, each genre of arts. Um, and it was pretty much just if you want to be a writer, you have to write. And I thought that sounds so simple, but very, very powerful. If, you're, if you want to be a writer, write and write every day. But if you want to be an, a professional artist, you have to paint, you have to work, you have to, you have to get out there. So taking that from the writer point of view, if you want to be a writer, you have to write. So if you want to be an artist, you have to paint. If you want to be a dancer, you have to dance and you have to do it every day. And you have to keep doing it. And you have to do it when your feet are bleeding if you're a dancer. You have to do it when your hands are sore, you know, if you're a painter. You have to do it. That's probably the strongest thing. Mm. 
Do me a favor, look around, what do you see? A broken room, a broken child, a broken family. And I've been trying to tell you for so long. No, I've been trying to tell you. So you got a lot of money, nothing to buy and no one to care for. Well, I can show you a place to go and cry. Wait a minute, I gotta catch my breath cause I'm chasing away all your sorrow. But if you take the time to organize that mess, you call it life. Mm, maybe we could get along. Problems. I'm just here to have a very good time. Tell me all about what's made you cry in the past few days. Did you lose a feeling or did something just not go your way? Oh, everything's important when you've got all that you need. And I understand you're hungry, but there's some that can stay on the feet now. You know it now, groove, get it right, don't waste my time now, groove. I ain't got no problems, I'm just here to have a very good time. I can see your future just by the way you act, by the way you say my name. So won't you say my name now, babe? I can tell how the world would change if I gave you the chance. So you'd give it all away just for a day in the sun. You know it now. Groove, get it right, don't waste my time. Now groove, no more. I ain't got no problems. I'm just here to have a very good time. time now groove. I ain't got no problems. I'm just here to have a very good time. Oh, now groove. I get it right. Don't waste my time. Now groove. No more. I ain't got no problems. I'm just here have a very good time. Hi, I'm Marin. I'm a singer-songwriter and musician. Uh, a great piece of advice I've been given was when I played with Aslan, Christy Dignam said to me, uh, try not to come across nervous, but also not too confident or else people won't want to watch you. Uh, during this time, I've kind of learned a lot on the producing music side of this industry. Um, I'd say a really good memory was when I played in Whelan's uh, with a lot of Irish artists. Uh, a piece of advice I'd give would be maybe just listen to as much music as you can from different genres and just enjoy it all. You won't be forgotten, for Ireland calls your name or just another statistic on the global stage of life. But a cherished memory for you loved unconditionally with a nurturing hand and a devilish laugh to boot. You showed me kindness, what was wrong and what was right. You showed me warmth and forgiveness, even in your last few days on this planet we call life. I will always light my candles, for Ireland will never forget your name. The wind whistles your tune, the birds sing your ballad. My life went dark, sitting alone in an empty church. 
until a robin flew on my shoulder to let me know Ireland will always call your name. Even in the darkest moments, your name will always show me light. How's it going? I'm Brian Gilligan. I'm a singer, actor, musician, and full-time dad. This is Dear Fingal. A great piece of advice I've been given has been look after each other. I've ate half my body weight in donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one of my best memories of performing was being part of Jimmy's Hall at the Abbey Theatre and performing for President Michael D. Uh, it's such an important political piece and I was very happy to do it for the President of Ireland. Don't stop trying to achieve what you're trying to achieve. Uh, stay creative, stay active, stay busy, stay strong and you'll, you'll make it. A place for us Somewhere a place for us Peace and quiet and open air Wait for us Somewhere there's a time for us, someday a time for us, time together with time to spare, time to learn, time to care. Someday, somewhere, we'll find a new way of living. We'll find a way of forgiving. Somewhere. There's a place for us, a time and place for us. Hold my hand and we're halfway there. Hold my hand and I'll take you there. Somehow. Someday